CBC Boxing. So as I'm going through BoxingScene.com, um, an interesting article popped up, um, which kind of talks about boxing and finance. Um, I was due to do, I was due to um, do a video on boxing and finances actually due to the um, obviously the COVID nineteen pandemic, but this one talks about um, Andre Vidrette's talk of pay cut, go cut pay for Canelo, Triple G, and Joshua. Now as I'm scrolling through. I found this article very, very interesting because, listen, the, in the boxing world, your average boxer does not make that much money. In reality, your average boxer, especially your professional boxer, doesn't make that much money. I remember going to a um, a, a pro fight. I think the guy was like five fights in and he was actually having to go around and sell tickets, physical tickets. Because obviously, when you don't have... um a promoter backing you you kind of have to promote yourself so he was having to go around to like different people trying to get tickets and he did to be fair he did sell a lot of tickets but i was thinking once you sell those tickets if there's no broadcasting rights you that's not going to get paid to you you then have to go and pay your trainer then you have to go and pay your nutritionist if you have one you know and at the same time you got to pay for a gym to keep in shape i mean you can do your road running um, which I'm sure will be cheaper, but at the end of the day, there are some equipment in the gym, such as a swimming pool, that's going to help. And then you have to go and pay your tax as well. And, you know, boxing isn't the most popular sport. So at the end of the day, you might not get that much. You might only get pff, roughly, I don't know, I don't want to start talking figures, but, you know, for what you're a boxer that you might see on TV might get, you'd be surprised how much um, a pro fighter in his first few fights, your average pro fighter in the first few fights might get. You know, not everyone has the luxury to be in the GB uh, squad like Anthony Joshua or uh, an Ame Khan where they have the backing of um, big sponsorships, you know, promoting their name. So then in their first fights, they can get around like 50 gram. But, you know, I'm kind of going on a little bit. But, yeah, Andre, he had the philosophy basically to have like a trickle down effect. So your big fighters, let's say you're fighting on the Anthony Joshua card. Um, you know, he would obviously get the most money because he's bringing in, he's the draw, he's basically the big draw, he's bringing in the revenue, you know, it's kind of like in the capitalist way, he's bringing in all the revenue, so it will, the majority of it is obviously going to go to him, but what and Android was saying is that this money should be used to subsidise the finances of the less fortunate, so if you're a bit further down in the card, you know, basically, what essentially what they're saying is it should be spread a little bit more equally because it's the whole card that is promoting the fight and not just one person, but to be fair, even though in reality that's fair, um, excuse me, in perception that's fair, in reality, is it really fair if someone like Canelo and Annie Joshua, whose name is actually bringing everyone in, everyone really comes in for the main event. You know, if, when you're watching boxing, when you look inside the stadium, even even the um, co-fight, the co-main event, is never really that full in comparison to the main event. You know, so everyone really is going for that one person. I remember hearing um, O'Hara Davis. He was um, previously on Matchroom. And I think um, AJ might have been, I don't know who AJ was fighting, but he was fighting at the O2. Then he heard how much O'Hara Davis was getting. He was like, what? That's what they're giving you? He spoke to Eddie Hurd and then boosted um, O'Hara Davis's um, purse up. So, you know, it just goes to show how difficult it can get. But, um, yeah, in regards to this, he's talking about obviously due to the COVID-19 that it should be a bit more spread it should be fair I mean listen I get the point what he's trying to say you know if someone's making you know 50 million a fight I'm sure they can you know give up you know 3 million to help everyone else especially in difficult circumstances like this but yeah I just want to just touch on how difficult it is really in boxing to you know how difficult it must be for them to stay afloat um, of their finances um, but another important thing is the importance of brand for these boxers. Your brand has to be A1. Like, you can tell that there's some boxers, they come in with the trash talk. And let's say Dylan White, for example, with Dylan White, when he first, first came in before the AJ fight, not that many people knew about Dylan White. It's not until A, it's not until um, IFL TV, the interviews, that's what helped him out and helped him build his brand. You know, and then people was like, you know what, this Dylan White guy ain't even that bad because Dylan got booed at that O2 against AJ. I remember I was listening to Dylan White um, interview on Bunce's podcast and then he was saying he found that difficult, that the fact they were booing him, you know, it was hard. And obviously AJ was the is the um, 
the golden boy. But now the tables are turned. You probably <laughs> now you're gonna hear more people booing AJ than Dylan White if they were to fight again. But man, it just got to show the exa- the um the importance of building a good brand for yourself when you're coming up in boxing, man. If people don't know you, they're not gonna pay. Um, and it, you're only gonna get once in a generation. Lovinchenko, you know, someone that's really really skillful, you know. Um, you know, you take Amir Khan for example, he's got a big fan base, especially in the Asian community, you know, they all back him, you know, so he's quite fortunate with that. Um you got Ricky Hatton as well, who had a great uh city with Manchester backing him. So yeah, sometimes you get good cities as well backing you. But um if you're unless you're a world class fighter, it's gonna be very, very difficult to to get through in boxing. But yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. Uh, CBC I'm out